Hi, Paul Bates, thegreatdad.com, and I'm here with my weekly series of conversations with dads and how they're managing their home and work life. And I'm really excited today because this is a uh, this is really just like the nub of what I do as a coach is uh, talk about how to balance business and work life. And I'm here with R.J. Campbell and Dustin Hogue. So welcome, you guys. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you very much for having us. And I love I love your mission because this is such so important for men versus a lot of women. I mean, it's an issue for women too, and in, in for modern women trying to deal with this. And there's certainly a lot of women who are a little bit about their family, where they can make a lot of money, and it's a tragedy for every family if both parents, I think, aren't around enough to be to be good parents. So I love your mission. What what you've been podcasting? You've been doing this podcast for about a year and a half. What made you decide to do it now? I'll start with that. So, I mean, the, it's funny because the story, like all good stories, is like what we like to say, starts at a bar, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I'll back up even a little before that. So, RJ and I worked together 12 years ago, something like that, at, at, in corporate America, that kind of thing. We went our separate ways. I went into the entrepreneurial journey right after that. And RJ stuck around in corporate America. And then we had lunch one afternoon and I, started coaching probably before that, but I, I was coaching a lot of people at that time and a lot of real estate agents and business professionals and real estate investors. And that wasn't the point of the meeting yet. RJ used it that, that, as that point. And he started asking me all these questions about investing in real estate. So I started coaching him and his wife in real estate. And at that time I was having, I had two very small kids. Was Ray even born? No. Wow. My daughter wasn't even born at the time. So it was just my son. And I started really paying attention for some reason of RJ's family life. And RJ, I knew his wife, you know, they had been married for 32 years at that time, 33 years at that time. And I knew he had three just really good, fantastic kids that were literally closer to my age than I am his age. And I was like, I, there's something about that. I want that. So I started using RJ as a mentor, as a husband and a father. So we kind of had that relationship going. And then one night after an event, we were both at, we were at the bar and I started talking about what I believe God put on my heart of who I wanted to coach more. And that was business dads. And what do the business dads have going on in their world? And next thing you know, hours were spent and RJ can kind of pick it up there, but hours were spent and it created the balanced business dad. Yeah. I, I should mention that you guys both have, you're, RJ, you're a little bit older. And Dustin, you're a little bit, you're, yeah, you're, that I'm somewhere in the middle, well, at least in the middle in terms of my kids' ages. But RJ, you've got kids in the late 20s, early 30s. And Dustin, you've got your, you've got your rally in the, the small child. Three Seven and three. Yeah. 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 He's a total newbie on this dad. <laughs> right, right, right. What are you, yeah. you don't have anything to say here. We yeah. You got men, nothing. Like <laughs> I've been a dad 33 years. <laughs> So, yeah, no, so you know, I, I love the I love the two the two voices because uh, I think there is some the the, the the obvious I believe there's some wealth of a, there's some value to experience because otherwise what you know what sense would it be but also, but also Dustin you're like the you're the modern dad which you know is uh, things have certainly evolved in that area and RJ maybe you could talk to that point what have you seen in the evolution of young dads because I certainly have seen a huge evolution versus our generation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think about my kids who are 33, 30, and 27. So the easiest one to pick up is the distraction of electronics. Oh. I, they didn't, cell phones, you know, didn't exist. We barely had landlines, you know, when I was young. So, I mean, I remember our oldest, our older son, he got his first cell phone when he turned 16. When you get a car, you got your driver's license, you get a phone. Our son who's 30, same way. Here you get your first flip phone. Because now you're on your own. Now our daughter, it's amazing. A couple of years, she received her first cell phone at 12. You know, well, everybody has them now. So, you know, their early part of the life was more like ours when we grew up. You know, they were outside and they were playing. We had, you know, it's not like we only had three channels on TV because you did have satellite. So you, you had more television options, but you didn't have the electronic distraction. Yeah. Now they started to get into video games and things like that. But that's just, that I think is the biggest difference is how much electronics and the immediate access to them are always in your hand, access to information and communication, which is also a distraction. Yeah. It's and huge. both for kids and for parents, right? I mean, the parents are, are, and the temptation is like, you're, instead of watching your kid at the playground, you're glued to the phone oh, and the kids are distracted. Yeah. 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 And aren't they always, we 
my wife and I will joke about that. Like we're perfect. We have our phones, but we'll be at a restaurant and you'll look over and people and either they're newly married or it looks like they're on a date. And both yeah. of them are like that. It's like, they're probably texting each other. I, but, but, it's just so funny. For our generation, that's just nuts. But It's just so easy, though. I mean, we fall in. It's not like we're perfect and don't because, oh, the old curmudgeons. It's like it's just the easiest distraction in the world and entertainment. I mean, it's really hard. So that, I, that's the biggest thing for us. Yeah, our kids came on the other end. They, they kind of saw both ends of it. Yeah. Dustin, you were going to say something? Well, your... I was just going to say, you know, that electronic distraction is, like you just mentioned, you mentioned as well, is the parents as well. Yeah. You know, my kids don't have that electronic distraction as much as I do because they don't have cell phones yet. Yeah, yeah. So the distraction is mine, not theirs. You know, they want me to be on the floor with them not ha handling my phone, where I feel like when the kids are older, then they're going to be distracted with the phone. And I mean, it's the whole, what's the song? Cats in the Cradle. Are we going to catch in the, in the cradle? cradle? Yes. A little Harry Chapin. Cradle song. <laughs> you know, when they're distracted with their phone, I just want to have their attention at that point. So, yeah, that that's a huge one. Yeah, that that song of you know, I think every dad comes out a few times below. And maybe that's the mantra that as we get get to the end of the show, that's the it's the perfect thing. It's like try to stay in the moment with that idea. Yeah. If you, and hey, look, there are some guys you know, our experience with the the tail end of this, RJ, is that that you what goes around comes around. If you don't pay attention to your kids before adolescence, adolescence is gonna be a bear because if you didn't pay attention to them, then they're not gonna pay attention to you in the teen years. That is so true. Yep. There's no doubt. And we were, yeah, and we were very hands-on. Again, it was easier, but yeah, we had great relationship with our kids, still do. We paid a lot of attention to them when they were young, almost because you didn't have another option. I think it was just <laughs> easier to just hang out with your kids yeah. and, you know, them want to hang out with you and play with them. So Yeah, I, I don't have, know. I've never seen any statistics on this. I mean, things do go wrong. You can be the best parents of the world and things do, you know, go sideways, but I think you've got a far better shot at having great. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't be having this conversation about values based parenting and all the rest if we didn't truly believe that a lot of what goes in comes out on the other side. Agree. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So, we, you guys, I, you're talking about in the name of your podcast and what you do is balancing this idea because of working and family life. And mm -hmm. how, what kind of advice are you giving to to young dads in that way? Can men in this modern world say no enough times or in their careers and still, you know, put food on the table and be good parents? Is it possible? So I, I we definitely believe it does. You know, everything you say yes to, you say no to something else. And I make sure everybody we coach and people in our mastermind, you know, know that. And what we're doing is we're balancing the important pillars of life which is our faith, our health, our marriage, fatherhood, brotherhood, and then career in that order. Now, we don't believe balance necessarily exists, yeah. right? You're not perfectly balanced at any time. So when we're talking about balance, first of all, we're talking about balancing as a verb. And it's being present in the pillar when you're supposed to be present in the pillar. You know, when I am with my wife, I don't want to just be talking about business or my friends or even the kids at that time. I want to have attention to my wife. Good when I'm with my kids, I want to be with my kids. I don't want to be worrying about the P&L statement that I have to look at or am I going to get that promotion at work or whatever it may be. I want to be with the kids. And it's that presence that we have in each one of those pillars that create the balanced business dad. Yeah, that that is such a huge challenge, though, because everybody... You come home from a bad day at work or, or you're swept up in the politics of work. You come home and the person, you're, you're the only person that you know is going to listen to you for a half an hour and not necessarily leave the room is your spouse. And I think we've all fallen into that where suddenly you realized I've just spent a half an hour talking about something that she's not interested in at all. And, you know, you like, I, you miss the opportunity to have that connection. But what a challenge. I had to keep that always in mind. But I love the word balancing versus balance. Yes. Yeah. There's no balance. Yeah. I mean, not of all of those things, right. for sure. And we've had people that bring that up. It's like, oh, you can't be balanced. Or like, you are absolutely right. There is some part of your life at this moment you're focusing on. I mean, it could even be long-term focus. A health journey. Dustin has spoken about that a long time. It's I don't know the topic, but he went through a almost year-long health journey, dropped a bunch of weight, trained for a fight, bought a professional boxer. He tells everybody, don't, don't do, do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, for charity. So- that was a year where he was 
if you looked at balance, no, his balance, his focus was so much on the health pillar that, but his family knew it, his wife knew it, the kids knew it. So sometimes we're out of balance for an extended period of time. Hey, the next three months, I am really going to be focused on whichever, you know, on but, something. But what you're saying there is you're intentionally unbalanced. You're intentionally, Correct. like when you're pregnant and you're about to have a kid, I mean, you're totally focused on that. You're not focused on all the other extraneous stuff, but you're intentionally balanced. But how do you? You know, I don't know what the answer is. How do you keep that uh, top of mind always to be kind of evaluating where I am on, for you guys, six different levels? I mean, we don't have a little thing on our phone or on our watch that says, hey, woo, you're out of whack. Keep an eye on that number five. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? We have to invent that app. <laughs> that just tells you. <laughs> um, but we do have metrics in place. And we measure yep. those metrics and, you know, in the mastermind, that's something that we have what's called a balance sheet, no pun intended. A pun actually intended. <laughs> <laughs> but it's where we rate ourselves, right? Because if you want to get better at something, you have to measure it, period. So right. we are asking ourselves that question. We are asking the people that we coach and mentor those questions. So we do rate ourselves on that. And, you know, we even do journal prompts. Hey, what did you do today to make you you feel connected with your spouse? You know, so there, there are tools to be able to do this, but it's all about the intention yeah. and that you have to want to do it. That's the big part is I, I, we can't create the desire for anyone else. But I believe that a lot of men want this and they don't know how to get it. So uh, that's where the, the mission comes into place. I'm saying on top of that, I mean, coaching usually quite often you have know, the wheel of life. You do that exercise where you, yep. you see what's most important to you and where, how you rate one to 10. And you kind of see what that wheel looks like. It's kind of an always an odd shaped wheel. And you, and you decide what you're going to work on to, to, able to get up to where you want to be. But it sounds like you're talking more about something like you're, you're evaluating like weekly rather than once a year or once every decade. Yeah. So we do it. You know, we have retreats. So because I own a campground, those re retreats <laughs> are at a campground. Yet, you know, so we do retreats where, you know, it's 10 to 15 men down there and we, and it, you know, you could be going over your balance sheet in front of your peers and it could take 20 to 30, 40 minutes. I mean, it's not a, a short, you know, relaxing day. We're going deep in. So we do that twice a year. Plus we have calls every month. Um, and, and we really, to get better at anything, it takes pur purposeful action. That's really what the reality of it is. So in each one of those pillars, it's purposeful action. Do, do you kind of stay away then from like, you know, top, top 10 lists or five hacks or five tricks to do this better because everything is personalized? I mean, everybody's work situation is different. Everything, every, everything that you could say no to is different, you know, has a different level of security for some, I mean, some things are easy to say no to. And some things are like, if you say no, you're just like out of a job or, a, you know, changing right. your status or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if we have came up necessarily with the five hacks. I mean, we do have some intentional rules, I would say. Uh, yeah. We wrote a, a blueprint last week, actually, about how to stay more patient during the holidays. Mm. And that is, I believe everyone can use something from there. It might not be every single one of the items that we wrote there, but everybody can use at least something from there, right? It's like mining for gold. You're going to find a nugget. And when you find that nugget, go use that nugget. And what were, what, I mean, you don't have to give the whole thing, but is there, are there some things in there that are, would be useful for people to think about? I'll let you go. Do you have your favorite? I know my favorite. Communication, expectations. That was my favorite. Did I steal your favorite? Yeah. So that was one of them, you know, because we're talking about, you know, it's the holidays time. You're hosting Christmas, if that's what it is. It's, you know, so setting the expectations with your wife, your spouse on, okay, when are people coming over? What are we going to have done? Who's doing what? That's our big one. Yeah. My wife's already preparing you know, the Christmas dinner and the appetizers and we need entrees and I need desserts. And so then it's okay on that day, set these expectations. What has to be done by when? Who's doing it? What am I doing? What do I own? So expectation I, I, is real close to communication. Yeah. My, my wife just found out that I invited a whole bunch of people over for New Year's Eve and she at the same <laughs> time had already accepted an invitation to go somewhere else and avoid the whole thing. So we're, we're working on those expectations right now. So it sounds like people are going to be at your house, not necessarily exactly. your wife. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Expectations are huge. And that, and I think expectations controls a lot of emotions and emotions controls patience and stress. 
right? Those are all emotions. So with the expectations where they need to be or expect the unexpected, which is another expectation. You know, I heard you told the story, you know, where you, something broke. So you had to go to Walgreens because it was the only place open and there's 30 other guys because there's something broke at their house, right? And no one's happy and it ruined your day, but it's like, well, maybe you should have expected that something like this was going to happen yeah. and just enjoy that you get to go laugh at all these other guys where they're laughing at you. You should put bar in the Walgreens. <laughs> they really should. They probably should <laughs> on Christmas and on Thanksgiving exactly. Day. <laughs> yeah. So, so you've got the podcast and then it sounds like Dustin, you're doing coaching. RJ, are you doing coaching as well? I do not do one-on-one coaching, coaching like Dustin does. We use the joke. So Dustin's a trained coach. Uh, I'm a coach with a little C. I just, I get to be a coach because I've been around longer than most of the dads that are in the group. So I've seen more, I've done more, I've screwed up more things and learned from them. So I'm, I would, like Dustin likes to say, are we used, I'm probably more of a mentor than a coach. So coaching within the Dad Up Council with the mastermind, yes, even though I don't call myself a coach. So it's probably more like a mentor, but no one-on-one coaching, but within the group, yes, definitely well, you're- in that way. You're probably more like me. I recently become a coach. I've been a coach for four years, certified and coactive and positive intelligence. But I kind of bungled through the whole dad thing. I knew I wanted to be a good dad. It was a really important priority for me, but nobody sent me a playbook. You know, in our generation, there weren't any, any, there were very few books. I don't know if you read The Expectant Father at one time. Mm -hmm. Armand Brat, that was one of the only books around 20 plus years ago about how to be a good present father, unless you're trying to read the lines between, you know, Dr. Spock or something, but mostly it was okay. really geared toward women. Whereas I'm sure Dustin, you did the whole, you've been doing the fatherhood thing a lot more clearly, a lot more intentionally. Yeah. I, and I think, you know, the fatherhood training and the husband training or whatever you want to call it, I look to mentors more than I look to books for that okay. because I'm, and that's honestly, a lot of the success I've had is I want to model somebody else's behavior of what, the, if they have something and I want that, I want to model that behavior. So I was very big on that. There are a lot more resources. I just learned much more from modeling and making sure I surround myself with the, the right people who are going to influence those behaviors. You know, we have a really good friend. You might even know him, runs the Dead Edge, Larry Hagner. And, you know, he's wrote a few different books, great books, but it, mod, being around the people who can, model that behavior of being a good father and being a good husband. That's what I've surrounded myself with. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that there are also at the same time, because I think that's what I did too. I tried to model myself after families that I thought functioned well, other men, my, my parents were divorced really early. So I didn't grow up with a father present. So I had to look kind of outward to, to find out what else was, you know, what, what, like I say, role models to, to follow, but it is great that in, in the last 20 plus years that there are a lot more dads speaking up and acting as general societal role models of, you know, this is good. It's good to be vulnerable with your family. It's good to be close to your kids. It's good to say, I love you to your spouse or in, and to your, you know, your little babies or even your, you know, your 30 year old kids. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's kind of like what the, to me, it's like the basis of what we're all about is family at the end of the day on your deathbed. Your, you know, your senior VP you had 20 years earlier in your career is not going to visit you and say, you know, what a great, wonderful life you've had. It's, you know, you, it's going to be your kids and your family. 100%. Wow, that's a mic drop. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You, let's, not, let's not go too far deep into exercise, but still, <laughs> I mean, it is important to keep that in mind. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. And that's what we talk about is. And you and I know you talk about you. Know, it's we need the voice from the father's standpoint. We hear a lot of the mother's voice, not the father's. Yep. And we coach a lot and talk a lot about being a modern man. But we are not the mod. It's just not why you would come to us for a you know for a group. The you know the balanced business dad. You know there are no Spartan helmets. We have no shields and we have no swords. That's not the modern man that we are. But we still believe you know it's the strong man who's willing to be the leader in the family, the leader in their marriage, leader in their faith. I mean, just lead in every way. But yet still be comfortable being the sensitive modern man. You don't have to be a pansy. It doesn't have to be that emasculated man. No, your family wants a leader. They want a strong leader. But to say I love you to the kids and be supportive of your wife and hug them and hug the kids and hug the babies. And Dustin and I both are like this. I'm a crier. He's a crier. Our families are criers. I'll cry at anything with my kids. And I'm not ashamed of that. But they know I'm still a strong man's 
you know, masculine man's voice to lead the family. Yeah. So, and that's really what we like to talk about so much because so much of that is kind of being taken away. We're just getting, you know, it's just generally everything's getting a little softer. But again, no Spartan helmets, no shields, no swords. We're not that group. But and, we do, is, and, and men do parent differently than women. It, it's, I mean, obviously there's a lot of crossover and all the lines are blurred now and then great for that. But, but we, yeah. we are complementary in our ways of parenting. Yeah, that's right? very true. And when we first started talking to that, so I grew up in a total women's world. So I have five older sisters oh, yeah. a, and a mother and a father that traveled all the time. So, I mean, I, I joke, I grew up swimming in the estrogen ocean. So when we started the conversations of, no, you know, women want a strong leader. They want a man that can be in charge. I was a little hesitant on that because I'm thinking, well, that sounds sexist. I don't know if my sisters would agree with that. Right. I don't know if my wife agrees with that. So, of course, we had that conversation and my wife and my sisters I've talked about, they're like, absolutely. Yes, we're strong women and they are strong women. Yeah. But we appreciate a, also a strong man in the household that's also a leader with us yeah. because we yeah. work together on these things. You're yeah. right. It's a little bit different, male versus female, but you can both still be strong leaders, strong characters in your own way. So yeah. I'm, I'm married to a strong woman. I'm attracted to strong women. Sometimes they drive me crazy, but but I really appreciate that. And I love that framing of, you know, two strengths coming together is, uh, yeah. is, is great. Yeah. So tell me about, is the dad up council, is that the mastermind or is that something different? Yep. That's the mastermind. That's the private mastermind that we have, you know, men from all walks of life, if you will, you know, that are business dads that are just wanting to get better. You know, the, the motto we say is we want to be better tomorrow than we were today. Mm. period yep. it's always growth and dad up is actually a framework on how to do that so you know starting if you write up dad up straight down the first d starts with decide to be better so this month this quarter this year i'm deciding to be better in this the a stands for analyze the gap so to know where you're going you have to know where you are right so we have to figure that out the d is we have to draw up the plan like, all right, this is what I want. This is where I'm at. This is how I'm going to do it. You is utilize the brotherhood. You do not succeed alone. So you utilize the other men in the council. And then the P stands for perform like your life depends on it. Because honestly, it does. Yeah. yeah. So Figuratively many, or literally. So how many men are in your masterminds? So right now we, in this mastermind, we have, yeah, we have, well, no, it's right now it's just a full one and we'll see how that goes, but we have about 18 guys in there that we meet once a month. And then the mastermind calls once a month, then we will do two retreats a year. Then we will also be studying some kind of book that we'll meet on twice a month as well, you know, for lessons, lifelong lessons. And then, you know, RJ and I might do a training or we might do another training with somebody else in the council. A lot of the men in the council right now speak specialize is that the right word for different pillars yeah you know, we have a marriage coach a faith coach doctors in it you know business coaches that kind of thing so if you need help with something or a training we have other men there to help you with each one of these pillars and you're in st louis so are these are you meet in person or are these online so the retreats are in person the mastermind is virtual yeah 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 yep. okay and you can find more on that at the balance business dad.com Yep, you can. Yep. Sweet. And then there's also a, a public a, a Facebook group that's the Balanced Business Dad. So on Facebook, you know, if somebody wants to find us there and we're always putting content and you can always reach us there. So actually it's dadupgroup.com, right? I got that right this yep. time. We'll send yeah. you right to the <laughs> Yeah. So if you go to dadupgroup.com, that will take you right to that free Facebook page. Register there. We accept you in. We're not very exclusive. And there's <laughs> over 350 dads, 360, 360 probably now that's, yeah. that's that, are, that are out there hanging out. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, it is. It is really fun because it get, it's so, some of these conversations that they start out really casual and you're talking about barbecue or whatever. And next thing you know, you're into something else that happened while, while in the, you know, whatever. And it turns yeah. into something different and everybody gets a, gets a lot out of it. So I, I really encourage everybody to take a look at that and take advantage of well, is it a free resource or are you, is it a membership? Facebook? So the private mastermind is a paid mastermind. The free Facebook group is a free Facebook group. Yep. And then, you know, free content that we push out there. Plus the podcast is free, of course. So it's always good to, to hear other voices. Okay. Well, this yeah. is, this has really been good. At the end of, end of these conversations, we always ask three 
these three questions. First of all, what was the, what is the biggest thing that you learned out of your journeys through fatherhood? Is there anything that really comes to the fore? Maybe we've already co covered it. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go with mine because uh, I've mentioned this before. Maybe contrary to parenting and fatherhood training, it's okay to be their friend. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I'm still friends with my kids. I love yeah. They like hanging out with It's okay. It's okay to be their friend. But th there is a shift there, isn't it? They're like around uh, 17, 18 where, yeah, it's a seismic shift. You have to be ready for that and setting expectations because it, there is something weird that happens that that first time when they come back from college or for, for you know, first time away. Exactly. Yeah, it is seem to be that college age where they do come back and it's different. It, it's almost like a friend coming yeah. back and not your kid. Yeah. So, and before yeah. they tell you to lay off and don't tell them when to come home or whatever, it's better to get in front of that and realize that, you know, things have changed. How about right. you? Anything you've learned in your seven years, six, six years of experience? Yeah, that I don't know anything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my my three-year-old humbles me my my seven-year-old who's honestly you know i'm very close to my daughter but my son is my best friend he was the first he made me the father and he she truly is to this day my best friend and yeah i don't know anything yeah. so it's that's a big one that i've learned through being a father <laughs> yeah don't you really think if you let them they can teach you more about being a human oh. being it, 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 Absolutely. I, I fundamentally changed. I finally got out of my own head and changed who I am by having kids. But you have to be, able, you have to allow that to happen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a humbling experience for sure. Yeah. They can teach you all the way through. Mine are still teaching me in different ways, but you're right. If you open yourself to listen, you will learn from them, especially, I mean, you forget about it, especially when they're really young. Yeah. The stuff that they will say and we're like, wow. How yeah. did you come up with that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like they're little Yodas, kind of like with the, the, yeah. the <laughs> truth of the universe sitting in there and they yeah. periodically <laughs> let it out. That's so true. Absolutely. Okay. So, and then also, w was there a mantra that you guys use to get through those difficult moments? Because everybody has a moment where they lose patience and there's nothing wrong with that, it just, but it's, the, it's stopping yourself from, you know, yelling or worse. That's the key. Today is today. Tomorrow it will be different because yeah. there are some really crappy days as a parent, whether yeah. it's midnight feedings and 2 a.m. and then 4 a.m., whatever those things are, challenges as teenagers, today is today. Tomorrow is going to be different. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So mine's on the same lines as that. And honestly, I've only had to use it a couple times. And that is, will this matter in five years? Yeah. And that's, that was, you know, my, my son was having a hard time. We'd have to sit in his room for a long time to get it to sleep. And it was really driving my wife nuts. And it's like, is this really going to matter in five years that this is the case? And, you know, that sleep training was really hard on me, probably much harder on me than it was the kids. Cause I felt like I was abandoning them. So yeah, that, that was a big one for me. Is this going to matter in five years? Yeah. And it's been about five years and it didn't really matter. Yeah, that's a good one for all kinds of things. Say arguments with the spouse too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> more helpful. A lot of that. A absolutely. Lot of it, like what was that old thing? Uh, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small. Yeah, stuff. absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. And then finally, if you had to give dads just a, a challenge for the week, like just something for this week to keep top of mind, do you? Is there any advice you or any kind of challenge you'd say like try this week to focus on, you know, this one thing or something about doing something intentionally this week, what would you say? It's the holidays time. So it's what we were just talking about. I'm going to challenge them on just patience. They, yeah. The kids are home, I think. Again, I don't know. My kids are grown. I mean, they're out of school, that, right? I, yeah. Christmas stuff. Time time has it no started yet? Next week. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that terrible? I have a daughter that's a teacher, and I still don't even know when school ends anymore. <laughs> but they're about to be home, and they're going to be underfoot and Freaked out, excited, because it is Christmas in a week and a half. So challenge to step back and be patient. Yeah. Go outside and smoke a cigarette without having to smoke a cigarette, if that's what it takes. <laughs> step away, go into the bathroom, whatever that is, because that's my challenge. Try not to spend too much time at the bar, but. Yeah. <laughs> right. But if you need to, 10 minutes at the bar is okay. Yeah. Drinking more. Better, better yet, a mastermind. I'm sure that's a, a huge relief. Release area for mm -hmm. guys to talk over what's driving them crazy this week. It is. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. You, you know, for mine, it's really two things. And it goes into, first of all, this week, put your phone down. Just try to put your phone down. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Right. The, and it, I've learned a lot from RJ from that because he's so much older than so <laughs> much older than me. <laughs> but, you know, he, when him and his wife are at home, their cell phones are like those landline things we've heard about. You know, they just put it down. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? You don't carry it with you? Right. But I love that. Right. Because you put your phone down. So you're so much more connected then. So I would challenge you an hour a night, two hours a night, whatever it may be. And the third one is analyze where you're at in whatever pillars or life circle you want to do, but take an account right now of where you are at. And are you happy with that? And if not, create a plan on how to change that. Yeah. I love that. That's a good, good resolution too for 2024. We can all take a hard look at our, what we're doing, what's important to us. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been fantastic. Rollicking good time. I always love talking to dads. You guys are great, great, great guests and have so much wisdom in part. I would love to do another show where we talk about the values orientation you guys That's have. And I know you've, you've discussed that a lot on your podcast. And I think that whole subject is just so important. The idea that the value that we have a lot of these values that are inside us already. So we will when you do live true to your values, you have a lot less of this constant upsetment and questioning and anxiety, I find. Yeah, absolutely. We would love to come back anytime. This has been great. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. You're yeah, great. great. All so you're, fun. You're, so you're, the website again, let's see, is it's the balancedbusinessdad.com. And then you've got dad, it's dadupgroup.com. Is yep. 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 Dadupgroup will take you to the Facebook group. Okay. That's it. You got it. Great. Okay. RJ Campbell and Dustin Hogue, thanks a lot for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, Paul. We really okay. appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Well, next week, allbeasagreatdad.com. Yeah. Take care.